Jake is 22 years old, living with his parents in Glen Waverley and studying business at RMIT. He's been in a relationship with his girlfriend for nearly a year and works part-time at a pub in Richmond. While leaving a party he attended at one of his mates' houses at approximately 2 a.m., Jake is the victim of an unprovoked assault by two males aged 16 and 25, who Jake believes were intoxicated. Jake suffers head, jaw and hand injuries and is temporarily left unconscious after falling and hitting his head on the wall in the hallway of the house. Blood and body fluids are present at the scene. Jake's mates ring triple zero and the offenders are found a short time later by police, not far from the scene. Jake is taken by ambulance to the Alfred Hospital and his parents are notified by the police. The responding police officers on site note the blood and bodily fluids. After the scene has been processed, the police officers call the on-call trauma clean number administered and funded by the Community Operations and Victim Support Agency. The on-call trauma program operates 24-7 and deploys cleaners throughout Victoria to respond to crime scene and suicide cleans to alleviate the stress and trauma experienced by family members, the public and police members. A few hours after the assault, at the end of their shift, and with Jake's consent, the police complete an electronic referral to the Victim Support Agency to contact him and offer support, which includes Jake's mobile number and his parents' contact details. The referral is received at 8am by a Victim Support Officer, or VSO, at the Victims of Crime Helpline, who immediately makes her first attempt to contact the victim and she leaves a voicemail message. Hello, my name is Rachel. I'm calling from the Victims of Crime Helpline. The police asked me to give you a call regarding an incident involving your son in Richmond last night. If you'd like support, please call us back between 8am and 11pm on 1800 819 817. Thank you. The victim support officer then contacts a member of the Alfred Hospital's social work department who, given the medical state of the victim, sets up a discussion between Jake's parents, his girlfriend and the helpline for that same evening. I'd like to set this chat up pretty quickly given Jake's condition. Uh, I think we should aim for this evening, uh, assuming everybody's available. Okay. Great, that'd be really good. During the discussion, the victim support officer makes a note of the immediate needs of Jake, his parents and girlfriend including Jake's upcoming exams, his work absence and missed income, and concerns about potential medical expenses. A case note is prepared by the helpline. I see, so because he's a casual employee, he won't get paid during his absence? No, he won't be receiving any pay, and he's pretty reliant on that pay to get to and from uni, and he's trying to save for a car. The victim support officer also gathers an update on Jake's medical status which reveals he has had his fractured jaw set and wired, that he has lost two teeth and has a fractured wrist and numbness in his fingers. All right, so it looks like he's gonna be out of action for a few weeks then? Or months. The surgeon thinks he might even need a bit more surgery down the track, um, and if nothing else, at least really lengthy rehabilitation. The purpose of this initial contact is to provide psychological first aid for Jake's parents and girlfriend and to provide a referral to a victim assistance program to help with financial assistance, advocacy with RMIT regarding Jake's imminent exams, advocacy with Jake's employer, navigation of Centrelink and victims of crime financial assistance applications, as well as therapeutic support if necessary. That's great, thank you so much for your help. It's really eased my mind. The following day at 9am, the Victims Assistance Program receives the electronic referral from the helpline. That same afternoon, the case is allocated to a victim support worker. The victim support worker from the Victims Assistance Program contacts the Alfred Social Work Department to arrange co-case management and a face-to-face -face meeting between Jake, his girlfriend and the Social Work Department for 10am the next day. Okay, so let's mark that in as 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'll send through some directions so that everyone's able to find us okay. Oh, that's great, Trevor. Thanks very much. 
They meet at the Alfred, where the victim support worker completes intake, assessment and support priorities, and completes the initial care plan. They identify some immediate issues, including the need for financial assistance given Jake's loss of income for an extended period and his lack of health insurance. Advocacy with RMIT regarding his upcoming exams, addressing Jake's lack of understanding of the criminal justice system and police investigation, as well as managing the trauma that Jake is suffering. I think it's really a huge weight off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, I think exams are stressful enough without all this happening and I was afraid that I'd have to do the whole semester again. Jake's care plan will include a referral to a solicitor for help with the Victims of Crime Assistance Tribunal, communication with Centrelink on his behalf regarding available payments, advocacy by his Victims Assistance Program case manager with Ambulance Victoria to organise payment of the ambulance bill, with RMIT to reschedule Jake's exams and with the police informant regarding the ongoing investigation. Yes, I was just wondering if we could organise um, a payment for the Jack Singleton case. Yes, uh, it was for an ambulance from Richmond to the Alfred Hospital on Sunday morning. Meanwhile, charges are laid against the two offenders, both of whom plead guilty. The victim support worker provides support by helping Jake to develop a victim impact statement for the court and refers Jake and his family to the court network for support at court during sentencing. The 16-year-old youth offender is referred by the court to Youth Justice Group Conferencing, while Jake is referred to Victims Register following the sentence outcome for the adult offender. As the adult offender is incarcerated in Victoria, that means that the Victims Register can keep you updated as his sentence progresses. After pleading guilty, the young offender volunteers to take part in a Youth Justice Group Conference, a pre-sentence program based on restorative justice principles available in the Children's Court before he returns to court to be sentenced. A victim support officer from Youth Justice Group Conferencing Victim Services arranges to meet with Jake and his girlfriend to discuss the process to ensure Jake is aware of his right to participate and to prepare for the conference. Sure. Well, I could tell you the purpose of a group conference is to bring together in the one room uh, the young offender and the people that they've harmed. So it's an opportunity really for you to talk about how you've been affected by the crime, how your family's been affected, uh, and hopefully through that conference process they'll be able to repair some of the harm that's been caused and also reduce the likelihood of that young offender re-offending. The conference is attended by Jake and his girlfriend, the victim support officer from Victim Services, the young offender. I'd just like to say that like, I'm really sorry for my actions. I didn't realise the severity of what I did. The offender's aunt, the offender's youth worker, the offender's lawyer, a police officer and the convener. Jake, please can you tell us how you've been affected by this crime? After the conference, there is a debrief with Jake and his girlfriend to ensure they understand and are satisfied with the process. Jake contacts the Victims Register, part of Victim Services, to seek information about applying for the register so he can be informed of key stages of the prisoner's sentence of imprisonment. The adult offender receives an 18-month sentence with a 12-month non-parole period. After 12 months, if the offender applies for parole, Jake will be informed by the Victims Register staff and invited to provide a submission to the Adult Parole Board and will later be contacted in advance once a release on parole decision has been made and advised of any relevant conditions. So you've received the letter from the Victims Register, Jake, and it's advising you that the prisoner has been granted parole in a few weeks' time? So it's important to remember, Jake, uh, once he's released on parole, that if he breaches any of his parole conditions and his parole is cancelled, he'll be returned to custody and the Victims Register will notify you of that fact. And we'll keep you informed, Jake, if there are any changes to any of his victim-related parole conditions as well. Authorised by the Department of Justice and Community Safety.